Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today I had a little problem and that is that I went through all of the Flat Earth channels that I usually get my material from and I didn't find anything that was worthy of my attention. There are no new arguments coming out in the Flat Earth. It seems like it's on its last legs and quite frankly is becoming rather boring. So I went back to my channel and I went to the community tab and I looked at a question that I put out about two weeks ago. And that is, Nathan Oakley's got his housekeeping questions, so I thought maybe I'd ask my viewers to come up with some housekeeping questions of our own. Something for globe science, you know, reality. So let's go through a few of them. Now, going through all of those responses, there were just so many really good questions, and I've picked out a few of them that I particularly like. Many times in the Flat Earth, they will tell you that the moon, the stars, the sun are just luminaries. They're points of light in the sky, and we don't know what they are. So, if they are points of light, how can you cast a shadow on a moon crater? Or how can you see a shadow of Jupiter's moon Io on the surface of the clouds. How do you cast a shadow on something that isn't there, or how do you cast a shadow on a light source? Now, while you can see a shadow in fog or in water that has a little bit of powdered milk in it, in order to get a sharp, high contrast shadow, the shadow has to be cast upon a solid object. That's what we see on the moon. That's what we see on the surface of Jupiter from telescopes on Earth. So how does that happen if they are points of light? Question number two. If water always finds its level, why does the level of the water change during the day? So on your flat Earth with no gravity, what supplies the energy to move this water? Where does the water come from? Where does the water go to? What causes it to go up and down in a regular cycle? Question number three. It seems the major way that the flat earthers try and claim that the earth is flat is by showing the earth is not curved. They want to falsify the globe. So tell me, how do you falsify the flat earth? Question number four. How many people know about this secret? How do they keep the secret a secret? What kind of control do they exert over their members to keep them from telling the rest of us? And how did you figure it out? Number five. If the sun and the moon move in a circle over the flat earth, what force causes them to do that? What force causes the sun to move in a circle from the Tropic of Capricorn to the Tropic of Cancer and back. Number six, by popular demand. What is the airspeed of an unladen swallow? Question number seven. How do solar and lunar eclipses occur on a flat Earth? You know, sometimes it's fun to just ask the flat Earth what I call rhetorical questions. For example, if the Earth is covered with a dome because you can't have air pressure without a container, where do meteors come from? For sleeping warrior, if you look at a triangle on a flat plane, the sum of the internal angles of that triangle are always 180 degrees. Yet you draw a triangle from New York to Los Angeles to Anchorage, Alaska, and back to New York on the Earth, and the sum of the internal angles is 205 degrees. How do you explain that? And finally, for Nathan Oakley, can you cite a single scientific article in a legitimate peer-reviewed scientific journal that refutes a finding or a natural law or a theory in physics by saying it's a logical fallacy? Just one. Well, now that I have my housekeeping questions together and the studio is almost done, maybe I should start my own show. I could call it 
the Globe Earth Debate Show. I could be your host, okie dokie. I could bring in my science expert, my expert on everything scientific method, Heisenberg uncertainty. And then for comic relief, I'll bring in Darwin. What do you think? You know, there are even more great questions. For example, if level means flat, what is eye level? Does the sun have to speed up to make a one revolution around the Earth every 24 hours, depending on whether it's the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Capricorn? According to perspective, if things go further away from you, they should decrease in angular size. Why doesn't this happen with the sun? Why do the stars rotate counterclockwise around the North Star? but clockwise around Cygnus Octanus. How thick is the flat Earth? Do you have a working model of the flat Earth? Over 50,000 people went to the South Pole as tourists last year. If they weren't at the South Pole, where were they? How high above London is the dome? Where is the dome anchored? And how thick is it? We can see an atmosphere on Jupiter, which moves. How can an atmosphere exist on Jupiter? next to the vacuum of space, and what holds it on? If the second law of thermodynamics says that an atmosphere cannot exist next to a vacuum, why can't the universal law of gravity give you a reason that it can? Can an apparent force exert a force upon you? Well, guys, I think I've asked enough questions for today. So I'm going to let this be a nice, short, but concise video. So. Signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe down there. The subscription drive has really gone well, and I appreciate you keeping it up for a little while. We still have a few more to go. So thank you again for stopping by, and we'll see you again real soon.